Why did Slack drop almost 70 20% after the earnings on the 4th of June? I think it's a buying opportunity and stick with me on this video. I'm going to give you five good reasons why you should add Slack into your portfolio, which requires a bit of a growth stock. I've done it for myself and I'm going to share to you my reasoning why Slack is a buy before the boat leaves. Welcome back. As I said, I'm going to speak about this amazing company, Slack. Bye, bye, bye. I jump into opportunity to buy on Friday uh, before it closed when it dropped to as close as $30 a share. And I had to go for it. I had to go for it. I missed it when it was at 22 and now it's at 30. And I thought it's time to get some after watching the promising earnings they've shown. Let's begin. Why did Slack drop 17%? Why did a Wall Street so hard on Slack, even though they did well, increase user growth, increase revenue, beat the EPS? Why? Why did they still drop it by so much? 17% is quite drastic. I've seen companies making losses and they still go up. But why did Slack go down? So it's really one primary re real reason. So Zoom released the earnings about a week ago, it smashed all targets, blah, 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 made profits, expected, share price has rocketed through. But then Zoom, what Zoom has done is they've overpromised for the next quarter, they've put the EPS ratio by four times. So basically, they've beat their quarter now, and the next one, they've jumped it four times, just telling the world that they'll be beating expectation way beyond expectation is that how you phrase it yeah look at the chart there it's just crazy and so the way they've done it is just demonstrate to investors that they're not confident on their growth they're not confident the fact that they'll be getting more user they're making more revenue they're eventually making profit no they never demonstrated they'll be making profit at the end of the year so if i were a wall street investor who pumped in loads of money you are telling me that you've got user great user base growth and you should be on the way to be making money making your first profit but you're being hesitant, so something is going on. So investors find it very annoying and therefore they took the money out and then boom, all stumbling blocks fell. So before we go, for those who do not know Slack, who has never used Slack, what's Slack? Slack is where work happens. It's a new layer of technology that brings together people, applications, and data, and it's replacing email around the world. The easiest way to understand it is that Slack replaces email inside your company. It's enormously important, but inside of a company, it works so poorly. Imagine a 10,000 person company. On average, each person sends 30 emails a day. That's 300,000 emails every day. But consider things from one individual's perspective. Today, she got 23 emails. That's not even one one hundredth of a percent of all the communication that happened inside the company. Maybe someone else gets 57 emails. That's still minuscule as a percentage of all the messages that may be relevant to that person. But the rest is completely locked away and only accessible if another human being manually sends it to them. And even that is one message at a time. You have these enormous flows of critical information coursing through the organization. But each person only has this tiny view. Their inboxes are partial and fragmented and radically incomplete. And every single view, the primary window people have to what's going on across the company, every single view is unique. This is nuts. And I guarantee you we will look back at this moment in history shaking our heads and wondering how we ever dealt with it. So what's the alternative? Well, first, let's turn the email into messages. And now, rather than inboxes, we're going to organize those messages into channels. Those channels can correspond to anything. Projects, teams, planning sprints, office locations, business units, literally anything that is happening across the company. Moving the conversations to channels created a huge increase in the return on the communication. The whole team is in the channel, and anytime anyone on the team has an update or a question or a document to share, they just put it into the channel. They type it up once, hit send once, and everyone who needs to know now or in the future is in the loop. So it's email communication rather than live link communication. Let's bit to the chase. The whole point of this presentation is through five good reasons why I think Slack is a good buy just now. So reason number one, reason number one, like I said, I think it's an evolution of corporate communication. You work in a large corporate communication or you might work in an architecture firm with 100 people in the company, you know, 
100 people company, three officers, and you can work from anywhere as long as you know the job. Rather than pick up the phone and call, hey John, how is that job? You can just go into your Slack and just check on the job number. John has done this on this date and this is where he's left it and this is the remaining scope to be done. So corporates are accepting it. It's improving efficiency and people are taking it. So it's changing, it's actually disrupting the email industry. And number two, number two, the reason number two is, like I said, it's making waves. But number two, the one I like is Verizon and Amazon. Zon and Zon. There's a team going on. Verizon and Amazon has accepted Slack as a go-to day-to-day work activities for their uh, personnel. And they have embraced <clears throat> Amazon on the 4th of June. They've embraced saying, we're all going to sign up Slack for every person that works in Amazon to give them a tool to help improve efficiency. So these two companies are very modern, working, millennial type environment company, accepting that Slack is the go-to device. And I just see momentum. People will start picking up. If American large modern companies are picking up jobs the way they do just now with Slack, they are just going to just influence other companies around the world in the likes of Europe, in the likes of Asia, Australia, South Africa, um, New Zealand, Canada. This will just go more and more. People will share in conferences how efficiency of work can be done. And my reason number three is going into profit soon. So the EPS, if they've seen, they've just hit 0. Minus 0. 0.02 at loss, very close to zero break even and then making profit. Who knows that they, they might be making profit by the end of the year. And remember the IPO came at $40 a share. $40 a share meaning if Slack makes money, if Slack breaks even. That's what IPO are being valued at. So if Slack eventually makes money at the end of the year or Q1 2021, that means they're worth $40 a share. Now they're exactly $30 a share. So you have $10 away. So you can, can you see that? Can you see that in my head? And number four, the, uh, number four is they've signed up with AWS Chime. So basically they're trying to get new products. It's not just going to be a product for your channel communication. It's going to be, they're going to expand to like video sharing, um, file sharing system. They're going to be uh, more chatbot. They're going to expand the product. And the way they are working, the business model they're working just reminds me of the likes of Salesforce, Twilio, Adobe, they're trying to create a holistic type uh, environment for user. So if you sign up to Twilio, if you sign up to Salesforce, if you sign up to Adobe on a subscription model, you get a lot, a lot of value. You get a lot of different software. You get a lot of different cloud software system. You get you get a lot of value for your money in your company. So I think they're going down that they're producing more to give customers and client more value for money, more products that they can sign up for. And this is longevity. This is the future. So Amazon, uh, AWS, Chime, sign up, uh, the longevity of AWS platform, they're just going to create all this cloud-based software. Okay, now for my final fifth reason why you should buy Slack at $30 a share. And uh, the, the fact that I like in, in, in the books is the lowering of costs I've mentioned, increasing subscription. Increasing subscription is not explosive growth, but it takes time. So if one come, let's say Ocado signs up, or let's say uh, Rio Tinto signs up to Slack, saying we're going to move on to Slack. You know, you're going to see subscription jump big stages. It's not a growth that you see number of subscribers like Netflix, it's going to be jump in huge stages. This is where you're going to come from. So if they sign two or three more large corporate firm, they're just going to go gudung, gudung, gudung. They're just going to jump. So increasing subscription, safe accounting. I think so. That's my five reasons why I bought into Slack at $30 a share, which I think you should grab it before the boat leaves. And uh, it's a, I class it as a growth company. You know, don't expect dividend, but a growth company who's going to make profit soon, you're going to see some real EPS ratio. And they're trying to mimic the business model of the likes of Salesforce, Twilio, and Adobe, which are great cloud uh, type-based company. So this is me on Slack. 
And I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you find it useful. Please do your own research. Please make sure you do your own research before you buy into these companies or the recommendation I give. Because at the end of the day, I'm not a professional analyst, but I know how to make money. Remember, I know how to make money. I've done it for years and I'm just sharing this as a free information to everyone around the world. So do follow me, like, subscribe, follow me on Facebook, which I speak about everyday information. Also, if you're a super fan, join me on my Patreon page, page so I can provide information like this every single day. So have a good day, guys. Bye, and see you in the next video.